this is a discussion on anterior abdominal wall anterior abdominal wall anterior abdominal wall has got great significance surgically for two reasons uh number 1 surgical incisions for and access to the inside of the abdomen are placed on anterior abdominal wall and the second importance is regarding hernias and mostly groin hernias majority of them are in the uh, lower abdomen so let's discuss the, some surgical aspects of uh, anterior abdominal wall anterior abdominal wall consists of muscles uh these are rectus abdominis and then you got uh, two oblique muscles external oblique internal oblique and we have got the most deeper deepest muscle is transversus abdominis now this is the line drawing of the abdominal abdomen anterior abdomen uh number 1 represents the xiphi sternum number 2 represents the pubic symphysis 1 xiphi sternum number 2 is midline pubic symphysis and in between is the umbilicus now the rectus abdominis muscle uh is placed longitudinally along either side of the midline place longitudinally along either side of the midline and this takes origin from the higher costal cartilages that's the nine this takes origin from fifth sixth seventh costal cartilages takes origin from here so the origin is about the costal margins and then it gets inserted lower down into the pubic crest pubic crest is on either side of the pubic symphysis the external oblique internal oblique transverse abdominis they are placed on the lateral side mid middle of the abdomen is occupied by longitudinal uh, rectus abdominis external oblique uh takes origin uh, from the higher ribs and it's in oblique structure it goes something like this uh takes an oblique course and gets inserted into the middle linear alba whereas internal oblique takes origin from lower side 
inguinal ligament, lumbar fascia, and goes higher up. It's oblique. And the transverse is again takes origin from the lumbar fascia, inguinal ligament, and runs transversely. These are large sheets of muscle. So external oblique runs from above to below, just like keeping a hand in the pocket. Internal oblique runs from below up, and the transverses run transversely. Now let's consider this uh, rectus abdominis. Uh, if you take a cross section of the rectus abdominis, this is the right rectus abdominis and this is the left rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis is covered by an anterior rectus sheet which dips down in the middle and covers the other side and by posterior rectus sheet dips in the middle and covers the other muscle. Now this midline is known as linea alba. White line. And there is no muscles between here. So this is the midline. This midline is linea alba. This is uh, linea alba. This arrangement of the rectus sheet is true between the xiphi sternum and a point between the umbilicus and the pavic symphysis, halfway between. This posterior rectus sheet is not present a point between the umbilicus, halfway between the umbilicus and the pavic symphysis. Somewhere over here a posterior rectus sheet is absent below this line. If you take this rectus muscle the anterior rectus sheet is present but there is no posterior rectus sheet below the pouch of Douglas and all the external oblique uh, internal oblique transverse abdominis they go in front whereas here external oblique internal oblique transverse abdominis internal external oblique contributes to the anterior rectus sheet the two layers of the upper of internal oblique contributes to the anterior rectus sheets and posterior rectus sheets and transverse abdominis contributes to posterior rectus sheets. The innervation of the uh, rectus muscle is from the lateral side. So if you want to cut the muscle, 
or detach the muscle you detach it from the medial side so keeping the innovation intact detach it from medial side retract the muscle along with the nerve keeping the innovation intact we'll continue with the external oblique and internal oblique transverse abdominus muscle in the next video